Good morning, my friends. It's Monday, September 13th, and I'm here with you at the rising of the sun, and I'm home. And my cat is outside, dogs are put away, and I have this beautiful icon of St. Francis. St. Francis Day is approaching in early October, and I want us to think about him. He is so important to us in these days. For those of you who have been watching these meditations since the beginning, you'll recognize this icon. I had it on my prayer desk when the pandemic began. Francis is turning towards us and with his right hand, he's blessing birds. And in his left hand, he's holding scripture. And you can see the stigmata on his left hand. such an important saint as we try to reevaluate our relationship with this planet and its creatures. We continue today in the first book of Kings. Ahab, the king, has a wife who is just so terrible that her name becomes a word that we use, Jezebel. It's a negative word for a terrible woman. Ahab is a pouty, difficult, moody king, and he's also very childlike. He sees a vineyard near the palace um, that belongs to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and he says, "Oh, that's a really nice vineyard. I'd like to have that. That's near to my palace. So he goes to Naboth and he says, I'll buy it from you, or better yet, I'll give you a better vineyard that's further away. Well, Naboth says, no, I don't want to. This is the land of my ancestors, and I'm not interested in selling. So Ahab goes back to the palace and he lies down facing the wall and he sulks <laughs> like a big baby. And his wife Jezebel comes by and she says, what's up with you? What's with the mood? And he tells her that he wants this vineyard and Naboth won't sell. And Jezebel says, stop acting like a baby and start acting like the king. She goes in and without Ahab's permission, she writes letters to the community around Naboth the Jezreelite and says, hold a fast and sit down at a table. Get two men who are idiots and fools to sit across from Naboth and let them give false testimony against him. Then let him be taken outside and stoned to death for wrongdoings that he didn't commit. She signs with the hand of the king. So the people around Naboth do exactly that. They take him. They have false witnesses sit across from him at the table. The false witnesses lie. He's then taken out and stoned to death, and his body is left there bleeding so the dogs can lick it up. How disgusting. What a terrible fate for this poor guy. Jezebel comes back and says to Ahab, Whoop! I guess you can take Naboth's land now. He's dead. And Ahab gets up and takes it. Elijah comes by and says, Ahab, you have murdered. And God is going to punish you. You are going to suffer and your descendants for what you've done. And so a man who is just a fool becomes a criminal because of the influence of his wife. And it's not only our spouses that can influence us, friends, relatives, people we've run into. Our character can be determined by the people that we choose to listen to. Who are your close advisors? Who are your friends? Are they people that you admire, people who make good choices, people who are trustworthy and faithful and true? Or do you listen to people whose lives are unending drama and problem? Because if you're taking advice from people who do evil things or whose lives are chaotic, you can guarantee that yours may be as well. Be careful with whom you take counsel. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the fall, for work, 
for school. This country continues to battle this virus. We ask you to give us patience and wisdom. Help us to trust in our medical community in the gift of science. Call us to do your work today, Lord. Help us in our own small way to be influenced by good people and to make this world a little bit better today. Bless those who are dying, Lord. Bless the sick. Bless our medical workers. Bless all those who are hungry or lost or in need. And blanket this world with your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.